Hello and welcome to another tutorial. We're going to look at the FM oscillator in Nano Studio 2. It's probably the most complex of available oscillators in Nano Studio 2, both for the sheer number of possible control points and the sound sculpting parameters, as well as its fundamental difference from the other subtractive synthesis options that most people are more familiar with. So yeah, even if you're not too familiar with the fundamentals of, of FM synthesis or sometimes called additive synthesis as a contrast to subtractive synthesis, uh, this video could suit you well just the same. So as we get started here, the first thing I want to do is just sort of erase everything from, you know, start from scratch, have an init patch. So go into patch, tap on the hamburger icon here and select init and just Again, for the sake of keeping things nice and neat and clean, I'm also just going to get rid of all of our mod connections. Uh, you can hit init, but actually that will start you out with some mod connections that are sort of basic starting points. Instead, you can just uh, select remove all and kind of have a clean slate like that. Also, we want to make sure that we don't have any other oscillators enabled, so disable uh, oscillators, say, 2 and 3, and just work with oscillator 1, although it doesn't really matter which one you, you set to your FM oscillator. And we'll, of course, choose the FM oscillator type here. So when you first look at the control options, these parameters for, uh, in a lot of ways, a typical FM os uh, oscillator, probably the most important thing to keep in mind is that everything sort of flows from top to bottom. You're kind of creating your signal from scratch at the top level. You're first operator, OP1, which is, stands for operator 1, and it flows downwards, you know, to the second operator through these different control points and the third operator. So every time I start working with the FM oscillator, you know, I, I don't always know exactly what I'm going to come up with, and if, if you have a tough time, you know, predicting what's going to happen, that's pretty normal. A lot of people who have been working with additive synthesis for a long time find it a little bit unpredictable, but that's also part of the fun, right? But in order to make it a little bit more predictable and fluid, I just ignore the second operator and the third operators, and I start with the first one. And also another thing I do to begin with often, especially if I'm trying to make an FM bass sound, is I ride the uh, frequency down to half the amount. So 0.5, basically. That would basically uh, move the FM operator down an octave. You know, every 0.5 represents an octave, sort of. And you're not going to hear that when I hit... This is going to sound like a sine wave, basically, at this point. And I'll actually... make sure it's loud enough first. I'm just going to jack my output just to make sure you can hear that. It's a sine wave, so it doesn't have a lot of character. It's going to be kind of quiet. Um, but you're not going to actually hear the difference, even though, you know, I told you that that's going to be an octave lower. Uh, you don't hear it until the second operator starts modulating it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to start adding uh, the operator signal to operator 1. And that happens at this little nexus here between operator 1 and operator 2. So when I'm hitting the node, I'll, I'll increase this. Oh, and I forgot, because we're actually outputting 0, uh, this, this sort of represents the amplitude of that operator, whereas this represents more like the waveform, the type of waveform you're adding or using to modify the base waveform of operator one. So we need to add an amplitude to that waveform, and now we can change the character of that waveform. You can already tell it can have a very wild effect on modulating that initial operator up here. And remember I told you by writing it down I can lower the uh, sort of the octave. So I'm going to do that right now. You can hear that now because there's an operator that's modifying it. So I often put it at 0.5 just to kind of get that really nice solid low tone. I kind of like this tone, especially for basses. It's sort of the, a good basis, a nice sort of even tone. I start thinking about how I'm going to add character to it. So I'm not even going to go on to the third operator just yet. I'm just going to work with the first and the second operator. Um, if I want a bit of noise, this FB 
modifier here on either operator one or operator two basically adds noise and change the, changes the signal in a sort of a unpredictable way, which adds has the effect of adding noise or feedback, essentially. So you can, that's the second operator's feedback. And you can, to me, that sounds like an old school, sort of like a Sega Genesis, you know, old school console, game console. I believe used FM synthesis. So anyways, you can make use of that and try to give a little bit more character to your sound. And of course there's the output of that bass operator, which you may not hear. That's basically pumping up that sine wave and making it a little bit more bassy. If you have a good speaker, you could probably hear that or headphones. And so while we're at it, now we'll actually look more closely at the operators themselves. Um, you can change this frequency, and you'll notice that that could have a significant detuning effect, because now the, the, the waveforms produced by these operators are out of sync. So depending on how far you go from that fundamental frequency, uh, you'll have maybe a very abrasive or detuned sound. You can also detune it in a more predictable way by modifying the uh, detune right here. I often like to keep my bass operator as a sine wave, something a little bit more, again, predictable and, you know, a good bass sound that I know isn't going to be just slaughtered unless I, you know, add too much noise to the, to the equation. So, Often I'll go to the second operator and change the base waveform type and get a sense of how that affects the modification of the operator one. So that really depends on, you know, you have more resonant ones. It really depends on what you're going for. If you want to have, you know, if you want to make more like a digital piano sound or something more resonant, mix and match and create some really interesting combinations. Now the next thing I might consider is modifying the second operator's frequency to create sort of a more harmonic or, or even dissonant uh, sound in the upper registers. So you can just... It doesn't change it as an octave, it just sort of affects the upper harmonics. So that's the next thing I do. It depends on the kind of sound I'm going for. And if I feel like I need an even more character-laden, more rich sound, then I look at operator three and maybe try to find a way to fine-tune the shortcomings of the other operators if I need more maybe bass or if I need, maybe if I want a more resonant flavor. But just a little bit, I'll make this resonant variant. Add a little bit of feedback, maybe tone it down a little. A lot of working with FM is just playing around with it. It's very hard to become predictive with what's going to happen. So again, right now it sounds kind of like an old school, you know, 16-bit console, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But but if you want a more you know sophisticated sound, something a little more up to date, um, you can modify any of these control points. Uh, actually, before we look at doing that from an outside control, such as an envelope or an LFO, there's a tremendous amount of options within the modulations themselves. So tapping on the uh, feedback here, let's say I want to make it really noisy just to make it more understandable what's happening. Oh, that's, that's really noisy and hard to, hard to make a useful sound with that, except if I then look here at the envelope that's available to that feedback, See, I can just, just affect the attack with that harshness and get give a little bit more attack to that sound. Or I can fade it in with the, uh, the attack rather than decay. And also there's the scaling options, which we looked at in another video where I looked at the Obsidian high-level overview. So if you need to kind of brush up on that, you should maybe check out that video. So as you can imagine, create quite a wild uh, amount of modulations from 
this baked in envelope available to you. As a matter of fact, you don't even necessarily need to even use the filter. I mean, just to prove it to you, it's not really being used right now because the cutoff is all the way up. I'm gonna disable the filter. And I'm basically gonna to try to create a filtered effect, an envelope filter, just using the FM oscillators uh, envelope options here. So I'll fiddle around a bit and we'll try to create a, a little bit more of a punchier attack bass sound. There's way too much feedback there, so I better tone that down. And there you go, you have something that already sounds like it's being filtered. And the way I kind of look at how to use these envelopes is I basically fiddle around with the control point and see what it does. I listen to how, how it modifies the sound, how dramatically it modifies it. And then if I feel like that's going to achieve what I want, then I look at enveloping it. Even though I was kind of being a little more random as I was showing this to you right now. But why stop there? You know, you have all these other controls available to you that you can set to these control points. So why don't we just go crazy with the LFOs and assign them? I'm not really going to try to make this, you know, into anything good. We'll just see what happens by sort of randomly assigning to these control points. Well, I think that was a mistake. <laughs> so why don't we just remove that? As you can see, it's very easy to kind of create something cacophonous with uh, assigning to the actual frequency operator but it does have its uses. Let's just be a little more traditional and add it to something like the output. And I'll make it unifull so it has a, uh, so it doesn't go bipolar. No jokes, please. <laughs> or you can joke, it's okay, I don't mind. So we remove that ill-fated uh, modulation to the operator's frequency and just uh, add it to the output. And we'll wanna kind of ride it from 86 down to zero and back, something like that. So we'll set it to uni full and it's gonna modif modulate downwards. So minus, uh, well, roughly a hundred. We don't have a hundred value points to work with, but whatever, I guess to make it precise, 84. So that creates sort of like a tremolo effect. And now so let's see where else it could be assigned to that might create an interesting sound. Oh, not much. There we go. That's more like it. And so that's a, <laughs> that's a pretty wild sound right there. Maybe not very usable, but who knows? Maybe something good can come out of that. If I had a sound like that, that's kind of mangled, what I might do is let's go stereo. All right. And that'll open up this pan control here. Put that in the left channel. I'm going to copy this oscillator one, paste it to oscillator three. Now we got stereo effect. And then maybe th for the second oscillator, I just want to like beef it up with a simple sine wave. Get some bass there, back into it. Change this right here, make it a little quieter. Yeah, we haven't even filtered it yet. I mean, we haven't even applied any filters of any kind, at which point I'm sure we can make maybe something really interesting. Let's do it really quick. Filter E and V to the cutoff, ride the cutoff down, filter E and V all the way up. 
Oh yeah, we gotta turn on the filter. It's a little bit better, but uh, I was just messing around. You can do a lot more interesting stuff with the FM. I think the name of the game is just playing around, having fun, and learning by actually having hands-on time. Hopefully this video is uh, instructive in helping you get started with all that. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.